Good evening, Fright Fiends. Tis I, Erlick the Gore Lord, a god to some, devil to others, but a film buff to all. It appears you have entered my lair while I'm busy making repairs on an old friend. But worry not, dear mortals, I assure you that she'll be all fixed up and sitting pretty in no time. You know, all this patching up of late reminds me of an old cult favorite of mine, uh, one rooted in a very true story, a story so grisly that it inspired films like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Silence of the Lambs. Join me now as I dig up the remains of the 1974 legendary Midnight Movie, Deranged. Released the same year as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974's Deranged is a low-budget Canadian-American horror biopic based on the life and crimes of Ed Gein. Directed by Alan Ormsby and Jeff Gillen, Ormsby, who is the mastermind behind children who shouldn't play with dead things, and Death Dream, the film opens up with a hearty warning and a little bit of exposition from a reporter, Tom Sims, played by Leslie Carlson, who you may remember from Black Christmas or The Twilight Zone. Roberts Blossom, who years later would go on to play Old Man Marley in the Home Alone films, uh, led the cast as the Ed Gein-inspired character Ezra Cobb, uh, an isolated and socially inept man who, years after his father's death, has been tending to his overly protective mother, played by Cosette Lee. You see, Mrs. Keene, I, I mean Mrs. Cobb, uh, was a rather religious woman who feared being alone so much that she dissuaded young Ez from ever pursuing relationships with women. Well into his forties, the poor man had never married, fathered, dated, or likely even been with a woman, solely devoting himself to the needs of his mother which she'd become many after she suffered a debilitating stroke. For over twelve years he kept vigil on her, sealing off much of the old farmhouse and keeping her in his constant close quarters. Uh, as her health deteriorated, his denial only grew until one day... Remember what I've always told you. The wages of sin is gonorrhea, syphilis, and death. They'll use their bodies to... To steal from you. They'll steal your life and your soul. She does, however, let Ez know there is one woman he can reach out to after she dies. An old friend named Maureen Selby. And why, after such a misogynistic rant, would she trust such a woman? Maureen's the only woman I ever did trust. She's fat, that's why. A big heifer. But she's the only good-hearted woman I ever knew. Things go from bad to worse when Mrs. Cobb begins having breathing troubles, and apparently there was a lot of leftover pea soup from the exorcist set, because Ez decides that the answer to his mother's insistence that she cannot breathe is to feed it to her. Oh, oh, you oh. oh, won't die. Mm. Honest. Mm. Mrs. Cobb expires, and Ez is joined at her funeral by the only two other people his mother apparently knew. Their neighbors, Harlan and Jenny Coots, played by Robert Warner in Marcia Diamond. 
I guess it's safe to say that Mrs. Cobb hadn't made the best impression on the folks in their little town, but no matter. Ezra is haunted by his mother's warnings for months after her death, and in his mind she begins to call to him, asking him to come dig her up and bring her home. After a year of torment from the grave, Ezra finally realizes what he has to do, and says aloud the one line every young man with an Opal complex only wishes he could utter. I'm coming, Mama! He ends the torment by digging her up and bringing her home only to be stopped on the way back by the local sheriff, played by Robert McHeady, who smells the rancid corpse and begins to get a little concerned. God! What in the hell is that? What have you been drinking, Ez? God damn! Nothing, sir. Uh, uh, it's just a, a hog I butchered is all. I'm gonna let you go this time, Ez, but don't let it happen again, you hear? And for Christ's sake, bury that, will you? Like any good boy, Ez knows he had said something quite impolite, and... I apologize for calling you a hog, Mum. He gets her home, only her state of decay is too much to bear, and he begins trying to patch her together using wax and makeup. Uh, that is, until the day his neighbor Harlan accidentally inspires him to make his repairs with, well, better materials. You remember her, Ed? Well, that's, that's old Miss Johnson there. What's she doing in the newspaper? Well, dang it, as I just told you, she's dead. You mean they put her in the, in the paper just because she's dead? Well, look, when a body dies, they take all the information and they put it in the newspaper in the obituary section. And it tells when the funeral is and where they're being buried and all that kind of stuff. You mean I can find out where and when somebody's been buried? And it's back to the cemetery to dig up Miss Johnson and use her flesh to restore Mother. This scene was uh, so ghastly, the MPAA ripped it to shreds, and uh, it's only available in its entirety on the uncut version of the film. That said, uh, enough of it is intact in the standard version to give you a pretty solid idea. After dissecting essentials for Miss Johnson, Ez patches up his mother and goes to work for his neighbors, the Kutzes. After some time, they express their concerns for his isolation and lack of companionship. Well, we're just kind of worried about you, that's all. And, well, we thought it would be nice if you could meet someone who... And I'd be glad to introduce you if you wanted. You know, someone nice who could be a companion for you, that's all. It is then that Ezra remembers, according to Mother, there was one woman he can trust. Maureen Selby, and why is it he can trust her mortals? She's fat! Well then, why don't you give her a call? Think I should? Sure. Go ahead, Ed, why don't you? Maybe you'll help her lose some weight. <laughs> Ez then goes to see Maureen Selby, played by Marion Waldman, and quickly learns that he isn't the only one who talks to dead loved ones. It turns out that Maureen believes she is still in contact with her late husband Herbert, and the, the two soon realize they have more in common than they would otherwise have thought. Maureen proposes they have a four-way, no, a group seance of sorts, and Ez rushes home to share the good news with Mother. But I like that fat. Big old arms, flesh just hanging down. <laughs> I like that. But when it comes time for the seance, Ez realizes that Maureen is, well, lonely, and that she wants him to pull out more than his uh, communication with Mama. There you are, darling. There you are. Scum! 
rather than lose his virginity, Ez decides to add Maureen to his collection of corpses. Uh, and soon after, he goes to a local bar where he meets barmaid Mary Ransom, played by Mickey Moore, whose flirtatious and possibly promiscuous ways are not only getting the attention of old Ez, but every other lonely old pervert in the bar. How would you like to tear off a piece of that, eh? Huh? Boy, if I had a chance, I'd bang her brains out. Look at that ass. And look at them tits. Both of them. Ez then gets drunk for the first time and gets escorted out. Welcome to the club. He returns some nights later and punctures her tires, setting her up for an impromptu date of sorts. Uh, he takes her home and heads inside. After several minutes, she grows restless and decides to mosey on in and see what he is doing. A stellar performance by his band, Deader Than Ezra, Mary tries to escape but is captured and told that she is to stay with the group as his bride of sorts. Uh, and like any good boy, Ez has her stay for dinner and introduces her to Mother, Mrs. Johnson, and Maureen Selby. Of course, uh, she can't eat with her arms bound and is partially untied where she tries to escape and is met with a bitter divorce. Some time later, Harlan tells Ez while reading the paper that she is still missing. And this is where Ez lets him in on his little dark secret. Don't they know they ain't never gonna find that girl now? Missing like that for that long? Ha! Got no better. She ain't missing. Oh, you got a theory too. She ain't missing. I got her. You got her. I got her. Ez, what do you mean you got her? I was my place. Mama, Miss Johnson. Ed, you cut out that crazy cock. I was only joking. It ain't very funny. One of these days, you're gonna get yourself locked up in a pokey. Soon after, the Coots' son, Brad, and his girlfriend, Sally, played by Brian Smeagol and Pat Orr, arrive, and they mention the boy is going hunting soon. Ez is taken in by the lovely young girl and stalks her at her place of employment, the local hardware store, where after buying some antifreeze, he waits for the hunters to head into the woods and returns to kill her and take her home. Only she was merely grazed and escapes his truck fleeing into the woods. Will she be caught? Will Ez get a new band member? Will he be caught? Deranged is a gritty and unnerving film. And while taking some liberties and deviating from the Gein story, it largely stays true to who and how he was. Not to mention that it was shot for under a quarter of a million dollars and had very little promotion. Unlike the largely popular Texas Chainsaw Massacre that has virtually nothing to do with the true crimes of Ed Gein, this film stays quite close to the actual story, making it incredibly chilling. While I could live without the repeated narration and exposition, there is a look and feel to this hoarder delight that makes the viewer feel like they are watching a documentary rather than a low-budget feature, thus making it quite the standout. Robert's Blossom is fantastic as the Gein like Ezra Cobb, and the supporting cast is largely good as well, uh, most notably the Kootzes. 
It's safe to say that if you're a fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or true crime-inspired films as a whole, Deranged is definitely a cult classic that deserves a much bigger cult. I give this wonderful necrophilic tale four out of five deader than Ezra performances. I am Merlek the Gore Lord, and I'll be seeing you all sooner or later. Stop the surprise.